grateful to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. All to Jesus I surrender humbly at his feet I bow worldly pleasures all forsaken take me Jesus take me now I surrender blessings fall on me. I surrender all. Stand your feet, please. Hallelujah. I surrender all. course again. Hallelujah. I surrender all. I surrender all. Hallelujah. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I surrender all. I surrender all. Hallelujah. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Give the Lord a clap offering. Hallelujah. 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 You're worthy, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. At this time, hallelujah, we are up to the most important part of our service, Lord. Hallelujah. It's the word. And the Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Hallelujah. I thank the Lord for the word. I thank him for our pastor. Hallelujah. As he comes to bless us with the word of life. Hallelujah. Receive him. Dr. Harold G. Durham. Say, preach the word. Preach the word. Amen. 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 God bless you today. Amen. We give honor to the great and awesome God that we serve. 
to the very fine and distinguishing First Lady, a, a man uh, who is a multi-talented young lady. A, a man, uh, for you that are viewing the telecast, uh, just here recently, uh, her book, Marriage Better With Time, has sold over 3,000 on Amazon. <laughs> a, a man, and she's... Uh, writing another book. I'm not going to tell you what that is, amen, but uh, God is doing uh, some amazing things uh, through her, amen, and uh, we are grateful uh, that she allows the Lord to use her uh, in every capacity, amen, and we're grateful for you, uh, those that continue to support this ministry week in and week out, uh, not only uh, with your finances, uh, but with your time and your talents. Uh, I, I want to ask you to go with us in the Word of God to uh, the book of 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy uh, chapter number 1. I'm sorry, 1 Timothy chapter number 4. And uh, verse number 10, 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse number 10. Paul here is giving instructions uh, to his son in the gospel. And, and how many know that we all need uh, to be mentored or tutored in, in this life. Uh, just because you're 18 or 21 doesn't mean that you don't still need to be guided along the way. Uh, and it's one of the reasons why the Bible says that the age women should teach the younger women. Uh, and, and it gives details uh, on how to be a chaste housekeeper. You need to know how to clean your house up. Uh, you know, some folks think you're spraying breach around is cleaning. Uh, but, 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 you know, you got to sweep mop first. <laughs> Amen. How uh, to raise your children. Uh, you, you, you know, it just having the baby is just part of it. But, but you have to know how to take care of the baby. Uh, and, and, and so the Bible gives all these instructions, and, and it says even to the older men that you teach the young men, you, you, you know, how to be good husbands. Uh, you, you know, so uh, we all need a little tutoring along the way. Never think that you're so grown that nobody can tell you something. Somebody say, help me, Lord Jesus. I, I can hear somebody say, when are you going to get to the text? He, he messing up already. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you what God loves, and that's the truth. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and uh, verse 10, For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. I want to talk to you from uh, the subject today, trust in the living God. I, I don't think you heard that, trust in the living God. Uh, because many of us are trusting in, in material gods. But Paul admonishes not only Timothy, but believers all alike to trust in the living God. And, and, and that is my prayer and my hope for you today, uh, those that are here in the sanctuary and those that are, vi uh, are viewing uh, live stream from Facebook, uh, that, that we trust in the living God. Father, we bless and we thank you again for being such an awesome God who continues to make the way who continues, Lord, to be 
uh, our heart fixers, our mind regulators. Continue to be the lawyer in the courtroom. God, you everything that we need. And God, every void, every struggle, every moment of doubt, God, we cast it out. And Father, we pray, Lord, that you keep us in the moment because, God, we don't want to miss what you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Trust in the living God. You know, Paul starts out by giving advice to his son in the gospel. And he talks about physical fitness, how it is important, but he uses this physical fitness as a metaphor, as a learning to for Timothy. Uh, he, he, he tells Timothy that body exercise is important because the body is God's temple. And, and so what he's saying is that we need to learn how to take care of the body because the spirit of the Lord is housed in this body. We, we can't just treat it any kind of way, but, but we need to respect the temple because God lives inside of the temple. Now, but, but he also says, but exercising unto godliness is profitable both now and in eternity. And, and, and so he, he gives us this example that oftentimes people are foolish if they take uh, this decaying body, uh, take care of this decaying body while ignoring their spiritual lives which will last into eternity and which can be renewed day by day. And so what he's saying to us simply is that it's okay to exercise and, 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 and take care of your physical body, but your top priority should be your spiritual man. That, that we must take care of the spiritual man. Now like physical fitness, Godliness is not developed by being passive, amen, and it does not just happen. It requires effort and, and is maximized through daily exercise. That is spiritual discipline. Now, as I was walking this morning, I began to reminisce and think about uh, when a person is getting ready to transition from this life to the next. There are some signs that you know that they're getting ready to die. Because Paul alludes to us dying to the flesh. Now, I've been around death long enough to know some of the signs. Because sometimes people will call, they don't, they don't even know you, but uh, uh, a, a, a man called one day and said that, that I'm dying, but he looked like the picture of health. And, and he said, but I need an apostolic pastor. No other pastor will do. And, and Sister Durham and I drove to wherever it was. It was a long way away, but we went and uh, and, and he just wanted to get himself right. Uh, but but I, I, I want to tell you that don't wait till you get on your dying bed to get things right in your life. Every day that God allows you to wake up, he's trying to let you know it's the right time to get things right because what happens if you have a stroke and unconscious and you're left in that state? And so we should live every day as though it is our last day. Yeah. 
Amen. And, and so when uh, the person is getting ready to die, uh, one of the things that happen is uh, your vital signs, uh, uh, they start to slow down. And we've got some medical folks in here. They can verify this. I'm a doctor, but not a medical doctor. Amen. Uh, amen. And you lose uh, your desire or your appetite to eat. Uh, amen. And when you lose that desire, you know you're getting ready to get out of here. Uh, amen. And, and, and so it is. Uh, I want somebody to get this because uh, when you are having spiritual discipline in your life, uh, little by little, uh, you lose the desire uh, for the things of the world. Uh, the things that used to be important, uh, they're not important anymore. The things that you used to struggle with, the, the, and you're losing the desire. The, look at your neighbor and give him a, a virtual high five. Uh, amen. And tell him, uh, hallelujah. The, I think I'm growing in God. Uh, amen. Because the things uh, that I used to want to do, um, the, I don't have that desire anymore. The, and now I know it wasn't me that did it. Uh, amen. It had to be the God in me. The, amen. And, uh, amen to pull of the that old wretched man that I am uh, and say, Derm, uh, I got a better way for you. The, the, Derm, uh, I, I know you've been struggling and straining, uh, the, but, 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 but see, now you're dying. Uh, amen, not the sensation of life, uh, but you're dying to those old ways uh, so that you, amen, can get connected uh, to the living God. Uh, and so Paul says, you got to trust uh, in the living God uh, because when you trust in the living God uh, when God gets in you uh, and you get in God uh, there's going to be a noticeable change Paul says that we must trust in the living God you see if we are inclined to to grieve because everything around us is changing, uh, our consolation uh, will be found uh, in uh, turning to our unchangeable God. Uh, or aren't you glad, amen, that things may be changing around us all the time, but God never changes? Uh, the Bible says in Hebrews 13 and 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. Uh, oh, friends change, attitudes change, uh, but God uh, never changes. Man, and so if we uh, lament the ills uh, of morality, uh, man, it, it, it would be wise for us, a man, to turn uh, to who is only, a man, the one that only has immortality. The, if our earthly joys fade and die, it is, it is a blessed thing for us to be able to go to the fountain of undying joy. The, amen. It was Nehemiah that said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Because joy is not conditional. I could have just got bad news. Amen. And I can still have joy. Because I know that the promises a God are sure. Amen. And, and, and there are, are to drink the deep shadows of bliss. Uh, we shall cause us, which shall cause us to forget our miseries. You know, if we get in God, uh, it doesn't matter how bad it look. Uh, for it, it, it was Job in the Old Testament uh, after he lost all of his kids, uh, after he lost all of his material possessions, uh, and the only thing he had left uh, was his wife. Um, uh, and she said to him, Job, uh, why don't you just curse God and die? Uh, but, but Job said, the Lord give it uh, and the Lord take it. 
He said, but blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, see, you got to understand that when you are a man are trusting in the living God, uh, when everything uh, a man seems like uh, is dissipating, uh, uh, when all of your influence is gone, uh, be reassured uh, that if God is for you, uh, he's more than those that are against you. Uh, he didn't tell you uh, that you weren't going to have reproach. Uh, he didn't tell you you weren't going to have opposition. Uh, but what he did tell you, uh, that I'll be with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Uh, I, I, I want you to know, amen, that without any further preference, Amen. I, I ask you to follow me uh, a while first uh, in, in a very simple matter. I, I, I speak upon the great truth, uh, amen, of the existence of this living God. Uh, amen, because the Bible says in the book of Acts uh, that they, they had some stones stacked up and engraved uh, to the unknown God. Uh, but aren't you glad today uh, that you know who the living God is? God is, uh, that it, it is not a stack of stones, uh, but his name is Jesus. Uh, amen. Uh, and, and so secondly, uh, while I draw a practical uh, inferior from that existence, uh, before I close my discord, uh, I shall have a, a question to put to you. First, for a little while, uh, let us think of the great truth uh, of the existence of the living God. Uh, Paul wrote this to Timothy. Uh, he said, therefore, the, we both labor uh, and suffer reproach. Uh, in other words, if you live right uh, for God, uh, you're going to work hard in the kingdom. Uh, and uh, somebody's not going to like uh, what you're doing for God. Uh, you, you say, well, pastor, what do you mean? Uh, well, you're showing somebody up uh, every time you live saved, uh, every time you've learned how to overcome uh, you're showing somebody up uh, because they're trying to hide uh, behind I'm a human uh, I'm flesh uh, I'm not perfect uh, God didn't say for you to be perfect not in the sense as men describe it the word perfect from the Greek simply means mature and Paul uses the example, he said that when I was a child, I thought like a child, I acted like a child. He said, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Uh, and so it is with our spiritual walk with God. Uh, when we first come in, we still may be hanging out. Somebody say, help me, Lord Jesus, Lord. We, we, we got to sanctify, you know, folks in here today, they... They, they ain't never done nothing wrong. But, but can I preach to the real church? Mm -hmm. those, those that uh, uh, understand that, that, that I have a love for God, uh, uh, but, but I'm still struggling with some things. And, and that's what Paul was talking about here in the text, that, you know, when you work hard, that there's always going to be some distractions. But you can't be moved by those distractions. Amen. And so he says to Timothy that, 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 that we both labored and suffered reproach because we trust in the living God. Now, he means by this, expre by this expression uh, first that God is truly in existence. He says, there's no doubt about it. Uh, I know God is real. Uh, now you can tell me anything, uh, but you should have got to me, uh, amen, before he revealed uh, himself to me. Uh, it's too late to tell me now uh, because he's done too much for me. Uh, it's too late to tell me uh, because he healed my body. Uh, it's too late to say that he's not real uh, because he saved uh, my soul. Uh, it's too late to say that he's not real, uh, amen, because uh, he picked me up uh, and put me on a street called straight. Man, and, and, and so Paul says, uh, 
God, the living God, is not like uh, the dead gods of the heathens, uh, amen, which are no gods at all, uh, which in fact uh, have no existence as gods. Uh, he says, but there are vast uh, multitudes have, amen, have bowed down before these images of wood um, the, or stone or ivory or gold, uh, but of them, uh, all it might be said, the eyes they have, but they cannot see. The, what kind of God is that? Uh, amen. Uh, they have ears, uh, but they cannot hear. Uh, they have noses, uh, but they cannot smell. Uh, amen. They have hands, uh, but they cannot handle. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. They, amen. They have feet, uh, but they do not walk. Um, uh, amen. They have, uh, amen. Uh, voices, uh, but they do not speak. Um, uh, amen. But the God that I serve. In the wee hours of the night, uh, he'll speak to you. The, the, amen. The, amen. I, I, and if you try to ignore him, guess what? He'll come to you in a dream. Uh, amen. Somebody know what I'm talking about because you've been trying to ignore him. Uh, amen. But God says, uh, I'm a living God. Uh, there's nothing dead about me. Uh, amen. And if you're worshiping uh, a dead God, uh, maybe that's why your life is foul and stinky. I, I invite you uh, to come uh, and dine with the living God uh, that turns the water into wine, uh, that takes a blind man, uh, amen, and opens his eyes, uh, a deaf ear uh, and opens it, uh, but a dead God uh, can't even hear your prayer. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but the God I serve, uh, he hears me when I call. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, call on me uh, and I will answer thee and show you great and mighty things uh, that you know not of. Um, the, man, it, it, it is in Psalms uh, 115 and 6. Uh, it, it is a sure sign uh, that man's understanding uh, is dead uh, when he can worship uh, a dead God. Uh, he, 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 man, but he says... Uh, uh, amen. Uh, he is uh, the God who supports uh, the whole universe. Uh -huh. By the power of his almighty arm, uh, he is the God who rules, uh, amen, all over. He, he rules uh, nature, the providence and grace. Uh, he is the true God, uh, the, amen, uh, the only real God, uh, no dream God, uh, no phantom, no m mysteries, uh, amen, no myths uh, conjured up by our imaginations, uh, but he is the real God, uh, the living God. Uh, and Paul says, I'm not telling you something that I heard. Uh, I'm not telling you something that I read. Uh, but while I was on the road to Damascus, the real God uh, knocked me off of my horse uh, or knocked me off of my animal. Uh, amen. And he began to talk to me. Uh, can I tell you God's talking to somebody today? Amen. He's been dealing with you. Uh, you don't know it, but you know what? Your flesh is dying. Uh, amen. Because the living God uh, is coming in uh, to your space. And, uh, and you know, uh, sometimes we don't like it, uh, but God says, I got to get your attention. Uh, he said, though you've been serving a dead God, uh, I want to introduce you uh, to the living God. God invites you to the table. Uh -huh. He said, come and dine at the master's table. Uh, amen. And, and, and when we begin to dine at the master's table, uh, we see that God, uh, amen, begins to bless us. Uh, and so we may worship him uh, then uh, with real worship, with real adoration, uh, amen, and with a sincerity of heart, uh, amen. What a blessing it is for us uh, when we are able able, amen, to worship, uh, amen, the true God. Uh, now, we might have been left, uh, amen, as our remote ancestors were, to seek after gods uh, that have no power. But, but I want to introduce you to this Jesus today, amen, that's never lost a battle. 
Amen. That, 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 that he goes before you and he makes the crooked straight. Uh, amen. And, and, and the Bible says that he is, uh, amen, the most high. Can I tell you that my second uh, meaning of this expression, the living God, uh, is that I have no doubt, uh, e e e amen, uh, because it lies in the fact that God is self-existent, uh, amen, and independent. Uh, if you never tell him hallelujah, he's still God. Uh, if you never acknowledge him, uh, he's still God. Uh, he was God before you were ever thought about uh, and he'll be God when you leave all for the scene uh, but Jesus makes this promise to us uh, every knee is going to bow uh, and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ uh, is Lord of all I want to ask you today, who, man, are you trusting in? Are you trusting in the living God? Amen. Uh, uh, are you trusting in, amen, the living God? Uh, amen. That has a perpetual blessing in store for you. Uh, the Bible says that he sits on uh, no precarious stone, uh, nor uh, uh, borrows uh, leaves to be. Uh, now, you, you, you know, there are some gods that you move around because it's a stack of stones, uh, but it has no power. But the God that I serve, uh, he can answer me here in the great state of Texas, uh, or he can answer you uh, in Tokyo uh, all at the same time, uh, because he's the living God. Uh, now, I don't have time to get uh, all deep with you, uh, but, but if you would examine all of these other so-called gods, uh, all of them are still in the grave. Uh, there's only one that got up, uh, and his name is Jesus. So, uh, amen. That's how you know uh, he's the living God. Uh, and the Bible said with infallible proofs, uh, he, he, he appeared before his disciples. Uh, he meant to let them know uh, that all power in heaven and earth uh, has been given to him. Uh, amen. They were so inspired uh, that they went around telling the same story. But have you met the true and the living God? You, you know, some of us had a God, uh, man, before the true God. Uh, you know, it was this, or it was this, or it was this, uh, amen. But I want to introduce you, uh, amen, to the living God, uh, amen, that will take the taste uh, of sin away from you. Uh, now, you, you, you say, well, well, Pastor, how can he do that? Uh, well, you got to get in him, uh, and him in you. Uh, and when you get in him, uh, and he gets in you, uh, that old flesh will begin to die out. Uh, those desires that you used to have, uh, folks will begin to say, you're not fun anymore. Uh, no, I'm not fun. Uh, I have a purpose now. Uh, amen. And my purpose uh, is to make heaven my home. Uh, because now I realize uh, I can't live any kind of way uh, and get to heaven. Uh, I, I can't just do any kind of thing uh, if I'm going to get to heaven. And, uh, my Bible said he's a holy God. And because he's a holy God, I have to become holy. And the only way that I can become holy, I got to practice what his word says. I got to do it the way that he says it. Amen. If I do it the way that he says do it, guess what? He says you can ask what you will. And, and what did he say? It shall, uh, shall, shall is a promise. But, but, but see, you got to be in him. If you abide in him and he abide in you, you're not going to ask for something that goes against his will. Every time Jesus, while he was here on the earth, look at your neighbor, say, newsflash. Every time while he was on the earth, when his flesh wanted to do something that didn't line up with the spirit, what did he say? He says, not my will, but thy will be done. See, that's when you know you're growing in God. 
When you quit trying to do what you want to do and you're more concerned about pleasing him. God, I don't, I don't understand everything. Can I tell you, you're not going to understand everything. But when you begin to walk in obedience, when you begin to practice the word of God and the word of God becomes a part of you, you start losing that desire. Now you want to be in church more. You say, child, what's going on? Mm. Now you want to pray more. Now you want to get in the word of God more. Now you want to be the witness that God has called you to be. Amen. Because the greatest witness is not how we can dissect the scriptures. The greatest witness is the life that we live before men and women. And so when we really understand that, 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 that what a joy a man is to worship such a God, a man as this, because nothing can diminish his life. Amen. Uh, his power, if his courts are sustained, amen, uh, not by the tributes of men, uh, but by his own wealth. Uh, see, God is self sufficient. Uh, everything that God created brings him a profit. Let me show you how awesome God is. God put ore and silver and gold in the ground, uh, amen, but you got to go in uh, and dig it out, uh, amen, in order to get the value of what he put in the earth. Uh, well, God is saying the same thing about the living God being in us. He's already put it in us, uh, but we've got to work in the spirit of discipline. Uh, that means that we can't casually have a relationship with God. It's got to be on purpose. It's, it's got to be passionate. It's got to be progressive. Sometimes folks say, you too serious. Baby, life is too short to be playing patty cake with my salvation. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, 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 man, you, 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 you just too serious all the time. I don't have time to be like the five foolish. Thought they had plenty of time, and they let the all run out. Look at your neighbor and say, don't let it run out. Let it run out. Amen, because you can't have none of mine. Uh -huh. Isn't that what the five wise said? Uh-huh, uh-huh. You Look, look. You, I, I got just enough for me. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm doing all I know how to do to live safe. Uh -huh. I, I'm praying all the time. I'm praying for you, but I don't have no extra oil uh, because you got to have some oil in order to get to the bridegroom. The oil is the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. You got to have the Holy Ghost. Uh huh. The Spirit of God. Uh, amen. You say, preacher, what you talking about? I'm so glad you asked. Uh, the Bible says in Acts chapter two and verse four, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. Uh, John 4 and 24 says that God is a spirit uh, and they that worship him uh, must worship him in spirit and in truth. Uh, the Bible says he's the living God uh, and when you get the Holy Ghost, uh, the living God uh, is now living in you. Uh, he said you can say to the sick, uh, you can lay hands on the sick and they recover. Uh, not because because of you, uh, but because the living God uh, is in you. Uh, oh, I don't think you realize the power that you have uh, when the living God is in you. Uh, somebody said in the word of God uh, that there is power, life and death in your tongue. Uh, when you are a king's kid, uh, you got to watch what you say. 
Uh, you can speak life or you can speak death to your situation. Uh, but if the living God is living in you, uh, you can be like old Ezekiel. Um, uh, amen. Now, he didn't, he didn't see it at first. Uh, but oh, when the spirit, the living God, uh, began to prophesy and speak to him, uh, he said, can these dead bones uh, live again? Um, uh, and oh, Ezekiel looked and said, Lord. Uh, you're the only one that know. Uh, I, because I see some bad attitudes. Uh, amen. Some foul, stanky, e e e amen, uh, e amen, rambunctious folks around here. E amen. But God said, begin uh, to prophesy to those dead bones. Uh, and as he began to speak life, uh, they begin to come together. Uh, what was dead came alive. But, uh, but can I tell you, you've got to exercise your spiritual discipline every day. When the Lord wakes you up, it, it's not for you to go get you some cheese and crackers. Somebody say, help me, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. He, he's been waking you up and you, 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 you go and raid the refrigerator. He, you know what he's telling you? It, it, it's time to come in commune with the living God. Uh, God says, I'm trying to take you a little higher. God, God, God says, I'm trying to get you a little closer. Uh, if, if you can see the plans uh, that God has for your life, um, uh, but God said you can't get them, uh, amen, until you get some spiritual discipline. Pastor, why, why, why do I have to have this? But I'm so glad you asked. E, 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 man, because the Bible, when it talks about spiritual distance, it means that there's got to be some boundaries. You can't be hanging out, e, 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 man, with sinners doing the super chicken, the stanky leg, and whatever they're doing today. I don't know. I, I, I'm way out of touch. And, uh, but, but whatever the latest is, I don't know if they're even doing anything now with COVID around. Uh, they don't shut the clubs down. <laughs> amen and amen to that. Uh, amen. But, but you got to separate yourself so that God uh, can speak to you. Because God says that I pulled you out to be used for my glory. You, you know, you, you, you can't go back to what you used to do after God has picked you up, cleaned you up, cultivated you, filled you with his spirit, washed you in his blood, had you to go down in his name, uh, and he threw your reckless past away. And so you say, well, how do I show my appreciation for all that God has done for me. You show it by keeping yourself untainted. You, 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 you can't do it by yourself. Oftentimes people say, well, I got to get good to get God. No, you got to get God, the living God in you, and God will make you good. If you stay in his word, if you pray and say, Lord, help me on the journey, he will do just that. E e e man, but you've got to understand, as Paul said in the text, that, that, that there was suffering and reproach. Folks are not going to like you when you stand up for what is right. And, and, and so Paul says that we, 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 we must trust in the living God. Amen. And if we trust in the living God, a man that has existed through all eternity, amen. You see, there was a time when you and I, who are now alive, amen, were not alive. Amen. We were just existing. Amen. Because you can have money, but if you don't have God, uh, amen, you're just existing. Uh, you can have nice houses, uh, degrees on the wall, but if you don't have God, you're just existing. Uh, amen. And so your economic, amen, status is not a guarantee that you're going to get into heaven. Uh, you can be broker than broke, uh, but if you got a relationship with God, then you're really rich. Because you fully have to depend on him. And, and, and sometimes God puts us in a place 
We, 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 we have all of these things, but God has to get our attention. So he, he puts us in a place to let us know that we are not self-sufficient. We still got to come back to him. And, 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 and so he feels his own eternal now. He fills us with his eternal spirit. You know why he's the living God? In the book of Genesis, when God created man and woman, they were not supposed to die. There was a tree there, the tree of life. And the reason why God didn't let them get to that tree was because they were in a fallen state. If they'd have got to the tree, God would have had to accept me being in a fallen state. But, but let me show you how awesome God is. God comes right back around. Look at your name and say, he's a bad God. He, he comes right back around, uh, and he goes through 40 and two generations. Uh, he, he goes through, amen, five dispensations before he gets to the sixth dispensation, uh, which is the dispensation that we're in now, the dispensation of grace. He comes down, and he shows us the blueprint. He lives like you and I. Yet, without sin. Uh, and, and, and then he says that uh, I, I, I've got to go back. Because if I don't go back, then the comforter can't come. Well, what is the comforter? The comforter is the Holy Ghost. So he says, I, I, I'm going back, but I'm going to send the eternal spirit. The same one that I had in the garden the tree of life, that you can live forever, but you've got to have some spiritual discipline in your life. You know, when, when, when people call me now, I, I just cut to the chase. I just asked them, are you right with the Lord? If you were to slip out of here today, are you right? <laughs> It's between you and God, but I have an obligation as your spiritual leader to ask you that question because you don't have to leave this life not right with God. And so I think that's the question that we need to ask ourselves every day. Are we right with the Lord before we lay down? Am I right with God? Am I holding a grudge against somebody? Uh, 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 you know, am, am I harboring bitterness in my heart because somebody disrespected me? Somebody did me wrong. Paul said, what shall separate us from the love of God? There should be nothing in nobody that is that important in your life that you're going to allow them to come between you and God. And so Paul tells us as I close, he said, trust in the living God, not the dead God that you stare at. When Sister Derm and I went to China some years ago, uh, I, I guess it was Buddha. And they had all this molded bread where they were trying to feed him. That it molded because why he had a mouth. He couldn't eat. While he had a throat, he couldn't swallow. He had eyes, but he couldn't see. He had ears, but he couldn't hear. But more important, they worshiped a God that had no power. I want to introduce you to the living God that has all power. And your situation can't get so bad that the blood of Jesus can't pick you up and put you 
on a street called Straight. And so today, if you're here, or if you're viewing this telecast, and your life is not right with God, you have an opportunity to meet the living God. The Bible says he never sleeps, he never slumbers. He hears you when you cry. If that's you today and your life is not right, I invite you to come to Jesus just as you are. You don't have to try to clean up. Just get up. And let the living God work in your life, in your situation. You see, there's nothing you can do about your past. Nothing. But what you do have control over is where you are now and how your future will be determined. And so as we go to God now in a word of prayer, if that's you, I invite you to come be with us in a live service. Call us and contact us. We'll help you to get to the living God. Father, we bless and we thank you even now for those that are here in the assembly, those that are viewing the telecast, those, oh God, that want a closer walk with you. Maybe you've gotten sidetracked, uh, distracted by the cares of life, by the desires of your own flesh. But God, I want to surrender totally to you. I want to die out to me. I want to be pleasing in your sight. I want you to lead me and guide me, direct me, and order my steps. I want to be with the living God. I've tried everything else only to come up empty. And today, if that's you, I invite you to come. I invite you to call because God is waiting and he's ready to fill that void. God bless you as our prayer. If you've been blessed by the word of God, the word of God is spoken to your heart. Contact us at the Better Way Apostolic Church. Call or go to our website and allow God to speak a word to you. In Jesus' name is our prayer. God bless you. Amen. We're going to put you now back in the hands of the conductor.